Hello, everyone. This is Ed Brenniger, and welcome to the Eddie Network podcast. And my guest today is Andrea Puff, and she is a coach with uh, a very unique uh, clientele of engineers. So it's fascinating. But she's also a person who likes to ask questions. So I'm going to let her introduce herself, and then she's going to ask the first question. And we'll see where we go. I have no idea what she's going to say, but this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm gl I'm glad you're here, Andrea. This is I'm grateful for you. And oh, and let me also say that we were introduced to one another by Rex Williams, who was one of our one of one of my guests on the podcast uh, back in the winter. So um, we have a mutual friend, and that's how we got together. So welcome, Andrea. Thank you for allowing me for being here. Nice to meet you, Ed. Good to see you. And I'm going to maybe do the shortest introduction you've ever had. I'm just going to say, hi, yes, I'm Andrea. And I've received a gift from a very good friend uh, who gave me this um, tagline, the engineer whisperer. So I'm Andrea, the engineer whisperer. Oh, I like that a lot. Um, so I'm going to ask you a question because, oh. is that promote? I mean, let me, let me ask you this question about that and then you can, you can follow up. Okay. So you're talking to engineers and what is it that engineers need to hear? If you're whispering to them, what are you, what are you whispering? What did, what do they need to hear from you? Themselves. Okay. Hey. There's something that about engineers where they've been uh, uh, putting a lot of people in front of themselves to uh, get where they are, maybe by pleasing others, by doing everything right, by trying to be perfect, by listening to everyone else, by meeting expectations, by, you know, the list goes on. And that maybe it's because they they learn it's a learned skill they they learn to hide themselves and one of the things that they learn is to learn that to hide their own inner wisdom that that voice inside of us who who is on our side it's the the best friend voice mm -hmm. who when you can do something says no you can just go for it it will be okay Give it a try. It's okay to be different. It's okay to do something differently. It's okay to speak up now. It's okay to say what you what you want to say. Um, so I think that is what is the the most valuable whispering that I that I do is I listen to engineers and I reflect back on what what they said or ask them some curious questions that helps them then pause and and go in this unknown territory for some of them that starts with the door you know imagine a door and it's on the door the unknown and the key is the sentence I don't know so the most beautiful thing for me is when I speak with an engineer or a group of engineers, when someone's willing to admit, willing to admit and commit to this feeling of, oh, I don't know. I don't know that. Well, you just asked. I never thought that it never ever crossed my mind. And then to you're going to sit on the edge or stand on the edge of their knowledge and and be okay with oh yeah i don't i don't have an answer right now but it doesn't feel so bad as others society has talking about it that when you're on the edge of your knowledge yeah it's a scary place with me when we're together it's it's a place where you can see opportunities where looking at the other side or looking down, if, if we're talking about a big gap in 
in nature visual and then you sit on the edge and i mean have you been to the grand canyon ed yes have you, many times have you have you have you walked to the edge of the canyon yes so that's the place where i like to hang out with engineers is this amazing vast magical almost impossible place like the grand canyon and to just sit on the edge and be okay sitting there because of what you see from the edge it opens up something that you cannot see unless you go to the edge wow i like that i like that a lot so what's a moment for you what has been a moment in your life at when you were at an edge like this, the edge of your knowledge, and who was there with you? So make it a two-part question. Well, I'm I'm going to describe that that edge as um, a point of transition, you know, and I've been in those points of transition. And probably the most significant one was um, a decade ago. And I experienced three losses. The, uh, the recession had come and gone, and, uh, and I had lost most of my consulting practice. Most of my clients had left me, and, uh, and it was clear to me that they weren't coming back. And I had taken on the uh, – I, I was on a um, – the board of a nonprofit and it was a really small one and we had decided we were going to raise some money and we needed someone to become the executive director so i became the executive director and um and so my consulting practice was failing it was dying 18 months into leading this nonprofit i was fired because I expected the board to, to raise money. I expected the board to give money. I expected the board to give me names of people to go ask for money. <clears throat> None of that happened. And in the middle of that, my marriage of 30 years ended. So I had these three losses and I had to decide, um, what am I going to do? My life was, my life was not over. I was in my, late fifties. And I, um, you know, I, I had begun my career as a minister and I was still a minister, but I was doing leadership work. And within less than a week of being fired, I was called to see if I would become the interim pastor of a small church. And I said, I have nothing else to do. So sure, I'll go do that. And I got to this church and found that they had been in a very abusive relationship with a former pastor. And, um, and, I, and I said to them, why don't we just hang out together? You've been through some trauma. I've been through some trauma. We don't need to pressure ourselves into doing something. Let's just hang out together. And these people loved me and cared for me. And it you know i was there for two years but after a year i realized i was going to need to move on and so it you know it took another year to put them in a position where they they were ready for the next the next person to come and at that point in time i my i said you know the question was um if i'm going to do something with the rest of my life I'm going to have to move. And so I picked up and moved to Wyoming. And and I and I did that without any more thought than I just expressed to you. And 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 that started a a, a series of transitions that has led to today. And I'm continuing I'm in a continuing state of transitioning to whatever it is I'm going to be tomorrow. And and the, there are lots of people who have been part of that, and I'm grateful to all of them. So, you know, that's that's the 
So I've and that and, and that in using your metaphor, I have I have lived on the edge all this time, and um, I've been looking down in that deep Grand Canyon, and identifying, you know, the places that on the horizon that I want to be. I love that you said where you want to be. Part of the work that I do with engineers is transition and one of them, I think one of the most powerful questions is to ask someone and then to ask yourself is who do I want to become? Not just what do I want to do, but who do I want to become? Who am I choosing to be? Because when it's intentional and when, as you said, part of the transition is letting go, letting go of something, your old identity, your old ways that got you here in a way that you can celebrate that they got you here. And then to be empowered to, to answer that question, okay, who do I want to be now? And then how do I begin becoming that person? So I love how for you, that was, I'm going to move. That's my beginning. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I'm going to, I'm going to choose to, to be in, to live on the edge and explore the edge. And to use the Grand Canyon, there's a lot of edge to explore there. There's a lot of there territory is. too. Well, and... well, here's here's the here's the thing, and I think this is important. I picked up and moved without a plan of what I was going to do, and it you know it takes it took several months to accomplish this, and um, I mo I moved all my things, then I came back to North Carolina because I had a project that I had to finish here and had some family events to take care of. When all that was done, I went back to Wyoming. And the first week I was there, I went to, there's a, there was a startup group, you know, a nonprofit that focused on people who want to start up businesses. And uh, I had been to these kinds of things before. So I go to this meeting, it was on a Monday. And, um, you know, and this is like the first week of me being settled into this new life and um i meet i meet this woman and she says oh so you're new here what are you going to do i said i don't know she says well we have this um leadership program called uh, the startup institute why don't you uh why don't you come join us and and it's a 10-week program we meet three days a week and um uh, you can figure out what you're going to do i said okay i think i'll do that when does it start she said, tomorrow morning. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll see you there. And see, this is a fascinating, this is so fascinating that it's it's almost like a paradigm that, that, that most people don't think about. Yeah. That the doing doesn't come first. It's the being comes first. Yeah. It's the deciding that you move. That's a transaction. Going somewhere, that's a transaction. Before that, we decide that we are going to be that person who's going to step out of the of our comfort zone, who's going to be adventurous and, and risk taker, who's going to be kind and listening, who's going to be these things so that when an opportunity shows up, like this lady offered it to you, you're, you don't think you don't need to think twice about it. It's a yes, because the flow has started like the flywheel. Know, yeah, used for engineers has already took off, uh, and it starts with that inner commitment to ourselves of really being clear of what what we want. I mean, I love in your story where you were also clear of what you don't want, and sometimes that's how it starts our path to knowing what we want by first figuring out what we don't want in our lives. Let's not stop there. Let's continue into what we want because the what we want is comes with this amazing energy that that literally takes you out 
you know, from one city to another one, from one district to another one, from one job into another one, from one company into another one, and sometimes from one company into starting your own company, your own business. And when we're paying attention to that energy, like a flywheel, that energy can just keep going and going and going. You know, in your metaphor, you're, you know, keep exploring the edge and staying there. For some people, it manifests differently. It's paying attention to that energy that drives us, that comes with, of course, a lot of fears, and at the same time, a lot of curiosity and creativity and noticing things and saying yes and accepting no's and being okay with all this. And in all this, Having a smile like you, that's one of the things that I like about you is, you know, people say positive attitude. Well, no, I can show you positive attitude, but that doesn't mean that I feel inside positive. So it's the genuine smile that someone has when, you know, one of my stories is we went camping with my family, I think two years ago, we, we just started off and we were a little bit off where we didn't make it to the first night. We didn't make it to where we wanted to go. So we literally, my husband and I in the front, the kids in the back. So we're talking like, okay, we don't have a plan. I don't think we can make it where we wanted to go. So where are we going to spend the night? Uh, so he's like, well, there are a few campsites along this road. Let's just see if we find something. And we went to the first one and drove around nothing. We went to the second one. I think we were pulling into the third one where we're like, okay, we either there's either going to be a spot here or are we just going to drive and that's it. So we pull into this third one and... As soon as we, it was a like a, you know a drive around. You go, you drive around around the road, a circle. So we go to the right, and as soon as we go to the right, there was an opening, and we were both of us so surprised, like that my husband didn't stop where um, you know in front of the open spot. He pulled a little bit further and stopped because we were so surprised. And we looked at each other, like, did you like? There's a spot there. It was so unbelievable. (laughs) So we were all all eye contact, like, should I, you know, like back in? Are we taking this? Is that real? And in these few seconds, literally few seconds of us looking at each other, what are we going to do? Because finally we found what we were looking for and we were so surprised. There was this little car who showed up behind us and there was enough space for this car to pull into that Uh. spot. So now when my husband, you know, he's putting it in reverse and then we see the red car and I remember the moment looking at him, you know, his face is changing. He's thinking, okay, how am I going to respond to this one? And then I'm looking at him and then my eyes went back and I caught my, my son's eye because he was looking diagonal for me and his eyes were, you know, signaling to me i'm really watching you mom like how are you going to respond now mm-hmm. like what like what is, is there a monster gonna come out like what is gonna happen now and i remember that moment having this okay i have a second to to decide how i'm going to respond and it was i just laughed it off i looked at my husband like well that wasn't the spot for us <laughs> yep <laughs> That wasn't for us. And, you know, he was shocked that I didn't, you know, like, I don't know, come out of myself and be mad and da 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 da. And my son was like, wow. She just, like, you know, everybody was shocked at my response. Uh, parentheses, I can be the, I can have other responses. I am, a, a, I have to say, very opinionated in, um, seeking justice when when I want to just leave it at that okay but at this point I just laughed it off I was life moves on there he that person got the spot it wasn't for us obviously and so my husband again very okay with my energy there 
took on the energy and said, yeah, okay, let's keep driving. And literally we went around and in a halfway in the circle, we found the spot and that was way better. It was closer to the bathroom. As soon as we, after we parked and everything, we, we talked and like, yeah, this is definitely better than the, the one that we just walked by, uh, drove by. Uh, so talking about energy, this yeah. is the energy that we carry with us every minute of our life, how we respond to things that show up or don't show up or other people's behavior in our life is what really, for me, in my point of view, creates the, it's the difference between a good life and the best life that I can live. So why don't we go for the best life when we have that choice? I think it's because we don't know what the best life is because we're so used to to living with the fear of missing out, F-O-M-O, -O, you know, or the fear of, of uh, failing or the fear of being humiliated. We have all these fears and um, when... And, we, and the and the largest fear is really that I'm not able to to manage the change that I'm going to have to go through in this. I think that's where people really feel um, a lot of stress, you know. And so they so they seek to stay the same because they feel like it's safe and it's secure when it's really not. It's it's highly risky because then they 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 lose control of their circumstances. And, and let's say they choose not to um, to change jobs. Let's say they choose not to change jobs because they want to stay where they are because it's comfortable and they and they used to. But then all of a sudden, the company gets sold or something happens and their department gets um, redundant, and all of a sudden they're out of a job. So instead of having constantly looking for the opportunity to advance oneself they are now trying to start from scratch at the at a critical moment where things are very quite difficult and um so i think i think that's part of what goes on and for me it was i'm just going to say yes to everything that, that comes for and to me and that was something i learned 24 years ago you know and we were i mean this we were off as as a family. We were we were at a Duke Ranch in in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Wyoming keeps coming up because it's a favorite a favorite place of mine. And we were and we were out. You know, I was I I was four years into being a consult leadership consultant, and we're you know and we were on the adult ride, and we were out in the mountains, and we come around the bend, and there are the there are the Grand Tetons there before us. And I heard a voice and the voice said, it's time to stop talking about leadership and lead. And, you know, I heard it was clear. It was unambiguous, whether that's God or someone else, wherever that came from, it was really clear that I was supposed to hear that. And I, and it meant that whatever was placed before me, I was going to say yes to. And within um, within six seven months, um, the leadership of my son's Boy Scout troop was placed before me as the as really the only one who could take it on. And it began one of the best seasons of my life as I learned actually how to lead because I had people that I that worked with me and. So I think it's being able to say yes. And I'm going to stop you because it was first, it started with listening. Whatever that voice was, yours, yes. God's. Yes. It started with listening. So we're going back in the circle. I started with listening to your own voice. The importance of that, of creating a space for it finding the space for it, seeking out the space for it, whichever you do right now in your life, 
Everybody has a choice. It's right in front of us. It takes it takes that commitment to ourselves first that I am going to listen. Mm -hmm. And and you were listening to the countenance of your son in the car. You looked at him and you listened. You saw what he was saying without saying the words. Yes. And you heard what he was saying to you. And, yes. and I, I just, I really, I really love that because you are saying to him, you are more important than my fear of not having a place for us to, to camp tonight. Yes. Yes. I also knew that if I respond a different way, he's going to remember. Yeah. Like this is a leadership opportunity for me to show him another way, a different way to choose to live. Yeah. I was very intentionally role modeling that you can laugh this off. You you can still have everything that you want, even if right now it seems like that it's taken. Right now, in that moment, it seemed that that car took everything that we wanted. Right? I could have gone into this depressed, drama, dramatic moment and put myself into become a victim. And I remember in his eyes seeing this, this curiosity of which one are you going to choose, mom? Or what are you, I guess, what? I don't know if she had you know, options for me, but it's uh, what are you going to choose? Show me. It was this, this energy of, I want to learn. What does someone do in this situation? Because I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And that was such an inspiration for me in that moment of, yes, what does someone do? Well, there's no someone here. There's me. I am the leader. I am the one who makes the choice right now. Does this apply to your own life? I think so. It's really, I've been taking, I've been believing this and taking this on since I was a, a very, very young child of knowing that I can re-engineer my life. doesn't matter how poor I was, you know, in the environment that I was in, how poor we were, what my parents were working or not working, what they had, what we didn't have. It didn't matter. Mm -hmm. Situations like that really are our teachers to to choose us. So in that moment, I chose me and I wanted to, I wanted to, be a fun mom, a fun wife, and a fun person who's about to, who started on this fun family trip. I didn't, I didn't want to ruin it for everyone. I didn't so, want to ruin it for me. So you let go. I did. I let go of the anger that showed up, the the feeling of unjust is of of maybe the feeling of I deserved that spot for some reason um so yeah all those I let go of all those other voices in my head or behaviors previous learned behaviors that I saw others do in the society in the environment that I was growing up yes I chose to be in alignment with who I to behave in alignment with who I chose to be. And this is what you remember of that moment in time. And if you had responded in the way that maybe the family expected you to respond, it, it wouldn't be remembered for this. It would be, it would be remembered as just another moment of whatever it would be, disappointment yes. maybe. But, yes. but now you you remember this as as I was different than I I expected myself to be, and I like that. I like being different. I like being different. I want to be different than maybe what other people think I should be, or I want to be different so that my son 
will appreciate me more. And what what better motivation than to to do that? Because it's a because you're you're saying I love you, son, and I want to be not just the best mother I can be. I want to be the best person I can be for you. Yeah, and he'll remember that. He'll remember that. And uh, yeah, because um, yeah, it's like, what is it? That, what's the saying? It's not what we do for people; it's how we make them feel that they remember. Mm -hmm. I think it's something yes. like that. Um, yes. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's interesting. You got any more questions? You told me about your childhood, that you had the freedom to do what, what you wanted to do. Yeah. <clears throat> so I want you to go back to that time. Okay. And I'm curious, what was the, back then, the craziest thought that, that you remember, the, the craziest want <laughs> that you wanted as a child? I would, um, okay, we're going to go, let's say, between three and, or five and seven or eight years of age. And I could walk out of the door and I could go play with my buddies. And we could just roam the neighborhood and nobody would ever know us, know it, you know. And, and we did, I mean, we did crazy things like, we had a big pine tree next to the house and I would climb the tree and, and get up on the roof. I mean, I'm, I'm seven years old, six, six, seven years old. So I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little kid and I'm, I'm climbing trees and climbing on the roof. And, and we had storm drains on our street and, and we would climb to the storm drains and the older boys would come along and they would say, well, you know that when the city hears that their children in the storm drains, they turn the water on and flush them out. <laughs> you know and you know we just we just did what we wanted and we we had adventure and we had adventure in our in our soul so to speak and um and you know i was you know i was allowed to walk to school and walk home from school just a mile mile and a half something like that you know i had to cross a major a major street and my parents trusted me I don't know if they were consciously trusting me. They just let let it happen. And uh, and what what I, what I took away from that is that we're all born for discovery and adventure and to and to learn by experience. And uh, and that's that's what I was able to do. And. Um, you know, and it's kind of been a theme all through my life. So I'm, I'm, I want to discover. You know, but what, what was the biggest thing that you wanted to discover, even at that age? I wanted, I wanted to see the, I wanted to discover the entire world. I wanted to see the biggest, the bigness of it, and, um, you know, and and where, I, and when I was a, a kid, I mean, we're, we're talking about the early '60s. This is before cable television, obviously before the internet. And so the only information that came into our home was from the three national news or the three national broadcast networks and, a, and, the, and the state's um, educational network on our television. And we would get a morning newspaper and an afternoon newspaper, and that's all we would get. And my mother would take me every week to the library, the downtown library, and I would check out books and I would read, I would read books about people and history and read sports books and military history books and, and books on science. I mean, I, I the, the two, the two books I remember that stuck with me were um, a book about the Wright brothers and their, and their invention of the plane. Oh, mm -hmm. they, you know, they were the Wright flyer. And, um, and then reading a book about Marie Curie who 
was a hero to me. I, I loved her story and I, I love her story to today. And I think it's because it's people who are deciding they're going to discover something that hasn't been found yet. And, and um, I think there is this mindset out there that everything that is needed to be known is known now. There's nothing more to discover. The frontier is closed. I mean, there, there was this, this goes back 125 years to, um, to the idea that the front, the Western frontier of America was closed. Everything it, that was needed to be known was known. And now mm -hmm. we're going to move into the industrial age of America across the area. Well, I don't agree with that. You know, I think there's still much to be discovered. There's much to be discovered in space. There's much to be discovered if you get off the interstate highways and go off on the back Ooh. roads. Huh? Yes. <laughs> and talking like my husband. And you get lost to go get uh, intentionally get lost and find your way. And I do that. I do that. So it's that kind of this, this kind of attitude of, okay, I want to learn things. And, and so um, now I see something online or I hear someone speak something or I'm, I'm at, I'm at a coffee shop or a, or a bar or something and someone says something and I, I've never heard of that before and so I'm I'm pulling up my phone and I'm I'm googling that I'm looking for a wikipedia on that and say oh oh okay and then I'm going to Amazon and I'm ordering two books on that topic because I want to know but I, but this is this is the 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 next dimension of that I I not I don't want to know just because I want to know I want to know so that I can talk to that person intelligently and identify with the things that they care about. I want to care about the same things that they care about. And that that's really the 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 the, the underlayment of the of the floor of my life, which is I want to understand so that I can relate to people. And and so it's all led to what we're doing right now, which is this podcast. And, and so this is where I get to have these conversations with people like you and you with me because we're talking about things that matter to us. I mean, and some of these people, like I, I, I did an interview this morning with a guy that I had never met before. I just saw that he had written a book. I thought the book looked interesting. I ordered the book. I contacted him and said, would you come on and, and talk about your book? And before we, um, there goes my phone, before we began the podcast, we introduced each other to one another. And at the end of that podcast, we said, uh, this has begun a friendship that will matter to us for a long time. So that's, that's what's behind what I was doing as a six-year-old climbing trees and climbing on my roof and crawling through storm drains in order to discover what's what's in the world and to connect to what's in the world and to connect with as you said the books are just a pathway that's right to connect with someone not to gain that's more exactly. knowledge and to become yeah the knowledge expert, but it's to connect to that person in this way, in this unknown way where, yeah, you gain the knowledge. And then there's this possibility to gain the friendship with someone, to gain a connection with someone that you, that we never had before and find out more about them. And then through that relationship to find out really more about ourselves. So you are. So Ed, I'm, I would like to challenge you. Okay. I don't know if any of your guests have challenged you, but I, I am bold, and I, I would like to challenge you that next time, use your example. You hear something that you don't know about. Instead of ordering a book and learning and reading about it, I challenge you to go to that person. 
and tell them that I, you know, you just said this, this and this and this, and I heard you. So acknowledge that you heard to them and then ask them to tell you about that. Well, I do. To learn do that. through them. I see the books as supplemental. I don't see, I see that the, the initiation of the, the initiation of a relationship is asking the question you're, you're saying. Okay. So then my challenge is to, to cut down the time when you initiate the conversation. Because maybe what I'm hearing that you're giving yourself this time to, okay, I need to learn about this. I need to read a little bit more about it before it's I initiate. Long. There's a very <laughs> short period of time. And and it may be nothing more than an article, you know, a Wikipedia or it's all it's only enough to understand what I need to ask them in order to initiate the conversation. Okay. So then my challenge is still standing. Okay. I want to challenge you to go into the next conversation where you don't understand. So maybe that's the key. Okay. Okay. To get you out of the comfort zone where you you are aware that you don't understand. Okay. Right now. I take and your challenge on. And welcome. see what happens. I, I welcome your challenge and I'll take it on. All right. And when when I have fulfilled my mission, <laughs> as Andrea has oh. defined it, I'll come back to you and we'll talk about it. I'd love to. I'd love to see what just just what happens yeah no attachment no expectations here ed just playing well, with that. the universe it's all it's all the expectations are all inter internal and and i think it's i think it's a great point and um i i accept it um graciously thank you thank you so do we have anything else to talk about do you, you have anything else that you would like to say? Would you would you like um, would you like to say anything to the engineers that may be listening? And because you know we we have met because of an engineer Rex Williams yeah. who's um, at Boeing, and it was because of Rex that I got I got in to do some training at Boeing. And I could tell you that it was so much fun. It's so much fun working with engineers. So I, I'm envious of you in that regard. So um, anything you want to say to engineers or say about engineers that can close off our conversation today in a in a really in a high mark? Engineers, it is time to stop hiding. Mm. It is time to get on the journey to find out who you really are. What are those parts of you that you love about yourself that have always been there as a small child? And those are the, your talents. Those are the ones that give you energy to drive you to create the impact that you always wanted to create. And you happen to be an engineer but you are an amazing human being so it's time to choose to live life differently and to find out how you can bring your whole self in front of everyone not just in front of the mirror when you look in the mirror in the morning and at night it's time to create the impact that you always wanted wow that's fantastic. That's really great. Andrea, it's been one of the best podcasts I've had, and I'm thankful to you for being who you are and being as flexible as you are in allowing this conversation to be what it has been. And I look forward to coming back to you and having another one with you and, um, and to tell you about what my experience has been. And it and it may be tomorrow. I mean, I'm I'm uh, I got an event to go to tonight where this may be may be the the moment. Well, let the universe do its magic. I believe in it. 
So I'm looking forward to it. Grateful for the invitation to be here. Grateful to spend the time with you, to be in your presence and and to listen. And, and uh, I feel the same thing as well. Well, everyone, you've you've seen an extraordinary um, interaction between two people who didn't know each other really before today, but now we've had a significant in, encounter with one another, and you can have this same kind of encounter if you choose. And um, if you listen and maybe follow Andrea's advice and ask a question, it initiates an inquiry into why people do a certain thing. You can do that if you choose to, and all you need is the will to do it in this moment. So thank you for watching. Uh, if you have a question or if you have a comment, please leave it with us so we can respond to you. And please subscribe and like as well so that you can follow along what what the, the Eddie Network podcast is doing. And I'm grateful for you're being here and thank you, Andrea, for being here. And I look forward to seeing you again real soon. And we'll see you all uh, next time at the Eddie Network podcast. Bye-bye.